So I know what you're probably thinking. Math belongs in school. That's where I left it. Why do I care about it now? Oh, I urge you to just hear me out on this one because there's some pretty cool stuff that we can actually do with math inside of Houdini. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So to start off with, just kind of want to outline what we're going to be doing. So essentially we're going to be creating a, well, not creating, we're going to be using Houdini as a graphing calculator. Sounds dumb. I know. Why would we want to do that? I don't know, but we can, so why not? So that's what we're going to do. So this first video, we're just going to be kind of laying the groundwork for everything that we're going to need for the next couple of videos. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be going a little bit more in depth on some more difficult, I should, I guess, uh, equations that you can graph. A little bit more interesting stuff along the line there, but we need to set the groundwork first. So we're just going to go ahead and set up what we need in this first video, and then you're going to use what you use, what you make in this video in the next couple. So we're going to use an attribute wrangle, and we're going to set this to detail for only once. So we only want this code to run one time, and we don't have any points for it to run over right now. So we're going to create some stuff. The first things that we're going to need to create is a couple of channel floats. So we're going to do float. And then we're going to do, we're going to call this one step size, basically our resolution here. So CHF, and then call it step underscore size. And let's go ahead and create that. We're going to make another one. We're going to call this one X min. And we're just going to do the same thing. We'll call this X underscore min. So the reason that we're creating this X min, and we're also gonna do an X max, the reason that we're doing that is because we need to have the minimum and maximum X values that we're going to be graphing. So let's go ahead, make our X max here. Create all of those. And then from there, we're going to need to create a position vector because we're going to need to have our position set to basically add a point or create a point and graph our functions. So we'll do a vector, we'll call this pause. And then we're also going to create our float X, basically our X value. So, and we're gonna set this equal to our X min because we always wanna start with the lowest value that we have. And then we're going to use a for loop to increase that based on our step size. Now we also are going to need to calculate how many points that we have. So we know how many iterations to have inside of our for loop. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create another float, we'll call this one PTS for points. And then we're gonna need to do a little bit of math here. Now, because both our X min and X max could potentially be negative, we need to create or take the absolute value of those. So I would definitely recommend going and taking a look at how to create all of the uh, functions for math uh, through the VEX code. So take a look at the documentation for that. So things like absolute value, square roots, and using the, the power function, you're gonna need to know how to do all those. So we'll take the absolute value of the X min and I will be going over what those are, but if you wanna do other functions that I'm not going over, then you're gonna to wanna to know how to, how to abbreviate those. So we're gonna add the X min and the absolute value, sorry, the absolute value of the X min and the absolute value of the X max. And we're going to divide that by our step size. So the reason that we're doing this is if our absolute value or sorry, if our, our X min is negative 10 and our X max is 10, then we need to add those together to get our 20, but that would be 20 points. So that means that our step size would be one if we're just increasing it by one every time. But we don't wanna do that. We're gonna increase by our step size because that's gonna be our resolution. So we need to get how many times that our step size it takes for it to add our step size to the minimum value to achieve the maximum value. Hopefully that makes sense. 
If not, let me know and I will try to explain it in a, in a different manner. So now we're going to create our for loop. So we'll do for, and we'll do int i equals zero. And then make sure you're using a semicolon here, not a uh, comma. I made that mistake too many times to not have it figured out by now. But we're gonna do i is less than or equal to our points value. And then i plus plus. So that is kind of the basic uh, for basic function of a for loop. We're creating an integer, setting that to equal to zero. So our integer i is equal to zero. And then we're going to loop through uh, however many points that we have by one until we are you know, equal to our points value. Once it hits our points value, we're gonna stop. So for here, let's go ahead and hit control enter Make sure that we're all good. Again, I literally just talked about it, but make sure you got your semicolon, not a comma. That happens too often. I should have that figured out by now. But we have all of our values set up here. So let's go ahead and set our floats. So let's set it to something like, we'll just do negative 10 since that's what we talked about. And then we'll set this equal to 10. So for inside of our for loop here, we're going to use our position vector. So we're just gonna set our position x equal to our x value, which at the start we set equal to our x min. So it's gonna be negative 10 to start off with. And then we're gonna set our position y equal to whatever we want. Now I say position y because that is what in math you most often solve for is y. So if you use things like Wolfram Alpha to, to solve functions for you, which we're gonna do so we don't have to do any sort of math, um, you're going to have the position y already be solved for. So let's just set this equal to x for the moment. And then we need to create a point at this value. So we'll do add point and we'll do zero for geo self, which is basically you're gonna create it on this point. And then we're gonna pump in our position value that we have created. And then we're going to increase our step size here. So we'll do x equals x plus step size. And now if I hit control and enter, nothing happens because something is going on here. And that is our step size. <laughs> step size is set to zero. So it's gonna increase by zero, which obviously it's not gonna do anything. So let's set our step size to 0.1. And now we have something going on. And this is just a simple function of creating, uh, basically setting our Y value equal to our X value, which creates this line. If we were to set this to something like a one, you see now we have one point for every integer. So if I look at our values here, what I was trying to explain up here with our points value, so we have 20 steps here, right? So there are 20 points in between negative 10 and 10, and we have 20 points on our graph here because we have our step size set to one. Now, if we didn't have this being divided by our step size, then we would only loop through 20 times, which is obviously not what we want because we want to control the resolution of our object, which is going to come in into uh, play later on. So make sure that you set this equal to this function right there and you'll get what you want. Now we can set this to something more interesting. So we could also do like sine of X and if I hit control and enter, you see we get our sine function graphed out here. And let's go ahead and lower this back down to 0.1 and get rid of our point numbers. And you see, we got some stuff going on, which is pretty cool. We can change this to whatever we want. So we'll do cosine. And you see, we get the cosine function, which is pretty cool as well. There's all sorts of different math functions that you can graph. You don't have to be limited just to this. Let's do something a little bit more complex here. So we'll do the absolute value of the absolute value 
of x minus 2, oops, minus 2, and we're going to divide that by the same thing, so the absolute value of x minus 2, and if I hit control and enter now, we get this cool little graph that's basically the uh, start of a rectangle, I guess. And if we were to set this equal to our x min, negative 2 and 2, we get some interesting stuff going on here. Let's do negative like 2.1. Get some different things going on here. But ultimately, that is kind of the basics of the of the graphing calculator inside of Houdini. Like I said, you can set this x or this y value to whatever you want, and actually, you can set this equal to the x value as well, and it will flip your graph to look like that. So if you want to create something like this, you can just flip the x and y values and it will change the orientation. You could also set it equal to the z and you see it flips it on a different axis again. So I'm just going to set this back to our y value and let's just see what happens here. Weird. Nothing really. So set that to whatever you want, but we're going to go into some more in-depth stuff here, a little bit more complex functions here in the next couple of videos. This is the basics that you'll need to get started though. So play around with this. You can do all sorts of cool things with creating these functions, create some interesting shapes, use those to augment any sort of modeling that you're doing. Maybe you want to create a sine wave um, and use that as one of the sides of your object. I don't know. You can do some, some weird things. You can also use this for some like generative uh, algorithmic art if you wanted to do some weird transformations and stuff add some some cool colors and different things in there i don't know there's all sorts of things that you can do with it so just let your mind run wild but hopefully this interested you i got like i said a couple other videos coming here that are going to go into some more interesting functions and also we're going to go over how we can create some uh, the lines, the actual line geometry um, for these graphs that we're making. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel. Um, so if you want to check out those, there are a bunch of stuff on Houdini, Redshift, Cinema 4D, um, Clarice as well. Think about getting into uh, Unreal Engine 5 too. So maybe stay tuned for some of that. But if you would like the project file as well, it will be available for download. You'll have to have a tier two subscription to my channel here. So if you weren't aware, I do have a membership on YouTube. So it's called the Thought Membership. That will get you the project files for this video, as well as a bunch of other videos that I have and videos coming up. So check those out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.